I'm Noel Bassiouni. I, I, mean, I work, uh, I mean, I'm an electrical engineer specialized in electric propulsion and power electronics. I was part of the Mars helicopter team. Uh, it's the first uh, aircraft to fly outside of Earth. I was the power electronic and electrical lead. Currently, the helicopters on Mars. We're waiting for the first flight. Well, I'm Mark Seddon, and I'm joined by Loa El Basuni, who's uh, not in a spacecraft. He's in Los Angeles. He's uh, come to join us here at Palestine Deep Dive. Loa, it's absolutely fantastic to have you. We're delighted. And congratulations for your fantastic achievement and that of your team at NASA. You transfixed the world. Uh, you haven't yet, yet shown us life on Mars, but that may yet be coming. In common with so many people who've come from America, you left a place where it was actually very difficult. Um, however, when we're talking about Gaza, it's more than just very difficult because uh, it's, it is the case that, for instance, it's very difficult to leave Gaza. Uh, there's still not a proper airport. Uh, Gaza, every five years or so, gets flattened and then rebuilt again with the most appalling human suffering that goes on. You, what was your, tell us about your early days in Gaza um, and, you know, the struggle to be educated, I guess. I mean, did you go to an UNRWA school? I mean, tell us how it was at the beginning. Yeah, so I mean, I, I am from, you know, Beit Hanun, uh, you know, I mean, all the schools were, I know what schools, so I'm actually, I grew up, um, I mean, I grew up in Gaza, you know, I mean, after the age of six, you know, I remember the first day I moved into Gaza, like I walk in the street and, you know, running to an Israeli jeep and everybody is running away, hiding. This was before the first intifada. And then I kind of like when I was in this fourth grade, the first intifada started. And, you know, I mean, kind of was a really difficult experience at the time because, you know, a lot of days we did not even go to school. So, I mean, our school was like shut down or, you know, I mean, I remember in my middle school, I mean, our school was like suspended for like a couple months, you know, and then like, you know, growing up through the first Gulf War, you know, I mean, the same time the school was closed. So, I mean, a lot of time you had to study on your own, you know, I mean, we had to like, it's almost like homeschooling, but my dad was too busy in the hospital. I mean, he's a surgeon, so, <laughs> you know, so it's like, you know, I haven't even, Sometimes I ask my dad some questions, but a lot of time we had to like really self-educate, you know, and and from there, you know, I finished, I mean, going through all of, you know, from, you know, later on through the the peace, you know, through the Oslo Peace Accord. And so there were a little bit changes when I first, before I left, came to the United States in 1998. So, I mean, it was a little bit kind of peacetime. I went and visited Gaza for like the year 2000, which is, you know, the last time I've been there. Um, but I mean, it, it was it was really difficult. Where it's like you know, in terms of like the getting access to the education. I mean, I did go to Enerwa school from grade one to grade nine. Um, so I mean, I mean, I mean, we had good teachers, you know. I mean, mm. I mean do, do, have you? I mean, is your family still in Gaza? Many members of your family still there? I mean, my extended family is. I mean, currently, my parents live in Germany. Uh, my my brother I have a brother in Turkey and a brother in. In, in Germany, he's a doctor, and, and I have a brother here in the United States. What do your family think about uh, your work for NASA and, and this extraordinary achievement of being part of that project that landed this craft on Mars? I mean, my dad is really, I mean, my, both my parents are really, really very proud. I mean, everybody, even my extended family is really proud. I mean, I don't know if you've seen any of the pictures of like people celebrating in Gaza, it's like I think there was more celebration of the perseverance than <laughs> there is in the United States. I mean, everybody's really kind of excited. Uh, I mean, so I mean, that, that's I mean, it's it's really amazing. I mean, the fact that I mean, my parents always proud of us that you know, I mean, all of us kind of finished. I mean, engineering school, and you know, my oldest brother is an orthopedic surgeon in Germany. So yeah, definitely, my dad is proud. I mean, yes, he wanted us all to be doctors, you know, and surgeon, but. Uh, I mean, he had a really rough time living, like being a surgeon in Gaza, working all the time. You know, I mean, he would work around the clock, you know, I mean, you know, they always case is things. I mean, he saved many lives. So, I mean, like to me, I saw that I didn't really want to be, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to really live in the surgical operation room. So, I mean, that's the reason I was like, and I loved electronics. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, when, when you, I mean, how old were you when you actually left Gaza? I was 19 years old. 
And did when when you left to study in the States, did you think that you'd go be going back at some stage to live? Did you think it was just a short period you were going off to America? Or did you think this is it? I'm off. So I'm, I'm going to there's there's something different I'm going to do with my life. I may, may obviously go back and visit, but I'm not going to be in Gaza anymore. No, I mean, honestly, I mean, I, uh, I always thought I'm going to just go study and then maybe go back. Uh, I mean, maybe you like, you know, go back and forth, you know, but, you know, like just, you know, be able to help out, you know, with the situation. Because I mean, it was like back then it was a little bit different. So, I mean, things change as like, you know, the situation kept getting worse and worse in Gaza. But so, I mean, like, you know, and then I had to really find, you know, decide you know i mean it's like i mean it really it's not it's not like i have a choice you know i mean it's like it's mm -hmm. kind of impossible to get into gaza so i mean you know i had to really kind of just build myself here in many cases i mean i didn't have it i didn't really have health insurance you know i was a student where like i was get sick and i wouldn't even be able to afford to see a doctor i mean you know i've just been many months where i'm like you know i mean if i didn't really live for a really nice landlord who would like wait couple months for me to pay the rent I would have been one of these homeless people I mean you know wow. so I, I I've been through a lot of these things I mean in the same, you just have to have determination like you know you want to really achieve your goal so I mean it kind of explain a little bit I mean honestly I I always wanted to make a difference so I mean I I believe that you know you to be to change something in the world you need to be part of the change or you need to change so I mean I mean I, I have really strong beliefs that you know like we needed to change the environment you know i mean and to change you know things in the environment our dependent on oils and things like that that you know i i really wanted to work in alternative energy so i and i worked with a local company here that actually worked in the electric vehicle that won the contract with nasa uh you know so and i was working part of that company so the, the helicopter was a joint development so you know i mean i mean i worked with jpl i mean i worked with nasa i didn't work directly for nasa you know, I mean, even though I had the option and offer from them afterward, to go <laughs> for them. And so, you know, so, I mean, this is kind of really the, the, the and this is how I really got, got kind of got into it. Um, and I mean, can you give us some idea of what you're hoping for uh, to come back from Mars? What material is going to be picked up and transferred? What, what, what do you think we're going to, to learn? I mean, one, I mean, there's like a, two different part words. I mean, the, the rover basically is the fifth rover. So there is a little bit more capability on this rover versus the older one. And then there's the helicopter. So I focus on the helicopter. I mean, the helicopter actually, this will be the first aircraft ever fly outside of Earth and will actually fly in a very low air density. I mean, the air density is about 1% of Earth. So, I mean, that's by itself is almost like to me, it's like the right brother moment. You know, it's like the first flight on another planet. Uh, so, I mean, by learning, by actually, by achieving that, now we learn that we have capability to fly on Mars or even possibly another planet, which means like in future mission, we could send like, you know, like instead of we sending a rover, we could, we could, you know, NASA could send like a helicopter. Yeah. And the other side, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, most of the mission, like a lot of people, like sometimes I think they don't really think like we you know, human trying to like we go live in Mars. But I mean, a lot of time like studying like space is basically studying the past and the future in the same time. So it's give us so much information about the past and the future. And that actually also help us in many things from like, you know, physics, you know, I mean, because like you like you validating experiment we have done based on theory on Earth. We understand that in physics and other aspect is like we end up by understanding the past of Mars you know, can actually help us to understand the future of Earth. You know, it's like what really happened on Mars, you know, I mean, especially now with like global climate shifts, you know, I mean, changes, you know, I mean, things like that, you know, I mean, we could actually that help us to under, better understand our planet. It's really exciting. Yeah. I mean, like just to know that we have arrived to Mars and like it's like the mission is safely landed and it's actually functional and signal of health back. Uh, I mean, I mean, that it is a seven month trip. So I mean, it's like, there's a lot of like, you know, my personal thing, there's like a lot of fear uh, as it was like, you know, since the time, I mean, you know, I mean, just like launching from earth. I mean, that's the huge risk and then going through space, you know, with all these shocks and vibrations and things like that, that could make anything not work. I mean, you know, I mean, there are space radiations, things like that, that affect electronics. So I mean, the fact that it is landed and, you know, still functional, 
that's just like just super exciting and i don't really talk too much you know about like me being palestinian from gaza you know i mean I, you know i kind of lay low you know but uh but i mean i'm sure like the people like know i mean they know i'm a really hard worker i mean a lot of my friends is like you know like they know i mean i, I worked really hard to get where i am you know i mean i had to do a lot of fighting i mean for every single stage i mean i could have failed many times you know i mean you know i've been you know I mean, I crossed the line, I had to cross back, you know, I mean, several times. So, I mean, definitely, like, the people who, like, been through it and seen it, yeah, they definitely, like, you know, like, yeah, I mean, you really have to fight a lot harder. I mean, just because mm -hmm. you're from certain place. Even when you apply to jobs, I mean, yeah, they, re realistically, they really cannot, like, you know, discriminate based on your background. I mean, it's against most U.S. laws. But in the same time, it's like, you know, people, like, sometimes, you know, is people don't know how to react because they don't really, if they don't understand the situation and things like that, they don't even know what to think. You, there must be lots of young people out there, especially um, in, in mm -hmm. Gaza and in Palestine and what have you, who do look at you as being something of a role model. I think, well, wow, if he can do it, so can we. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, I do, I mean, I, I, I mentor several, a lot of different students, you know, who are like actually, and, and I say it's like, you know, I always say the same thing. It's like, you know, if you have hope, you have beliefs, you know, you just, you just need to continue, create a path and continue working on it, no matter what's stopping your way. You know, I would be glad to be a, a, role, a role model. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, everything honestly is possible. I mean, I don't think there is, I mean, without flying on Mars is impossible. So, yes. Well, of course, everything is possible. I and mean, we they have a, a American Palestinian Congresswoman, Rashida Tlaib. You, you met her, I think. Yes. What did she say to you? I mean, you know, I mean, she's, I mean, she's an amazing woman. I mean, <laughs> but I mean, honestly, I haven't, I haven't really spoken to her. I mean, after, but you know, I mean, I mean, I'm very big supporter of her. You know, I mean, if, if any Palestinian or even you know, Arabs or any anybody, I mean, anybody from any any place in the world, you know, I mean, they should achieve their, you know. I mean, we just thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I congratulate you for all that you've achieved suggest that President Biden hurries up and has you and the team round and uh, gives you some kind of uh, great medal for all the work that you're doing, because it's not just uh, for uh, the United States, uh, uh, it's for it's for humankind. Um, and, uh, but especially for people back home in Palestine, uh, you know, the lives are tough, there's been a great deal of suffering, you know this more than anybody. And so for so many of them to see someone like you shining a light from on a high in your spacecraft from Mars is most fantastic thing. So good luck with whatever you do next. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.